Hi, I'm Carl Willis, and this is a spark detector uh, that I made uh, after uh, designs by Tim Rainey in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, my detector is uh, a little bit different from his as far as the wire spacing, but otherwise it's basically uh, derivative of his designs. What we have are some, uh, some very thin 3 mil tungsten wires. They're very hard to see in the video. There are four of them. And they cross a aluminum cathode at a separation distance of only about uh, a tenth of an inch. Right now this, this apparatus is turned on. There is now a, uh, uh, an 8,000 volt potential, negative potential, on the aluminum cathode. The wires are grounded so I can, I can safely touch that electrode. Here I have a uh, polonium-210 source, nucleus spot uh, source, happens to be fairly high activity, 5 millicuries. I'm just leasing this guy, but uh, I'm going to bring it near the spark detector and we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. We're just at the threshold of detection now. Some of those particles are making it. As we get closer, you can see I can actually sort of paint an image as this beam of alpha particles crosses the uh, crosses that area. What we have is alpha particles ionizing the air under the wires, between the wires and the cathode, and uh, causing conventional electric breakdown of the air there. Let's take a look at some other sources. Here is a uh, here is a uh, about a 60 microcurie americium source from a uh, pyrotronics uh, smoke detector. Once again you can see the uh, position at which the uh, detector is uh, detecting these alpha particles. Uh, so it's position sensitive uh, in a way. Let's look at one more thing. Let's look at a uh, a moderately intense radium source. This being from Milwaukee record all activity is probably about 10 microcuries. There's some very high energy alpha particles emitted by the radium decay uh, chain. What we're seeing is some of those. But again, this is a quite intense source. So that's it. This is a very simple piece of apparatus to build yourself. Uh, you can do it very inexpensively. I used a piece of G10 that, that I cut out uh, to form a moat to better insulate the cathode and enable a higher potential there. Uh, but there's a, this is a fertile project for experimenting with things like wire spacing, uh, wire size. Um, really, it's sort of a basement type of thing that you can see uh, you know just how cheaply you can build it but as you can see it is uh, quite sensitive to uh, alpha particles and it involves unlike Geiger tubes for instance it involves no uh, specialized construction techniques. Um, I should mention that the uh, load resistor protects the uh, these wires from burning out due to high discharge currents that's uh, 20 mega ohms and you need to be careful with your uh, wire, your lead capacitance. Don't, don't have that be longer than a few feet or you'll uh, store some significant energy and again risk burning out your wires. But other than that, no real caveats. It's an easy project. It's simple. It works well. And uh, thanks for watching.